What's up everybody? Welcome to Deer and Donuts. For those of you unaware, I am Matt and today I'm going to be bringing you my review of the Maven B5 15x56 binoculars. Now like a lot of our YouTube gear reviews, someone jumped into our Instagram DMs and said, hey, what do you think of these binos? So we dole out the $1,600 so that you don't have to and we're going to let you know exactly what we think of them in this review. Now speaking of subscribers, we're at about $450, all right? At 500, we're gonna do another giveaway. So if you're new to this channel, jump on down, hit the subscribe button. We do a ton of cool gear reviews and hopefully it'll be stuff that'll help you get a little bit better set up for hunting. Now let's dive into the actual review and talk about these Maven binos. Now, if you haven't heard of Maven, you're probably not alone. They're a fairly new company. They started in 2013 and they're following what a lot of outdoor companies are going to and that's that direct to consumer model. Now, what does that mean to you? Well. Supposedly, it's going to mean a higher quality optic for a lower price because they're cutting out the middleman. That's something you're going to have to decide if you're liking or not. It's the same model that a bigger brand like Kuyu has gone to, and they're being fairly successful with it. Now, Maven does a lot of cool things. They have a really, really, really good warranty. It's basically the same as Vortex. And if you've ever heard of Vortex, obviously, you know they have a great warranty. Basically, if they break for any reason, whether it's your fault, whether it's your buddy's fault, whether it's their fault, they're gonna fix it. No questions asked. It's really hard to beat. Now, one other cool thing they do is the demo program, and that's how I got my hands on these. Basically, you shell out the money for the binos, they send them to you, you get to try them for two weeks, and then you send them back. No questions asked. You get to make your decision based on that, whether you wanna buy your own new pair. Now, let's dive into why you guys are actually here, and that's the review of these binos, all right? The Maven B5 series is their top of the line series for something with a large objective lens. So they have a C series, it's kind of their mid range, but this B series is really gonna be the top and it's modeled after their B2 series, which is more of those eight x 42 or 10 x 42s that you're used to seeing in a hunting model if you're like a Midwest whitetail hunter or something. These are gonna be more for your out west glassing really get you a good magnification, great objective lens, get you out of ways. Now they do come in four different magnifications. They come in 10 power, 12 power, 15 power, and 18 power. And they're all a 56 objective lens. A 10 by 56 is probably gonna be crazy bright at low light. I can't even imagine what it looks like. Obviously I don't have them, but it would probably be really impressive if that's something you're really interested in. Now they start at $1,450 and they bump up $50 each time you jump up a magnification range. Now, for those of you mathematicians, that means these are $1,550 new. Now that's a substantial price tag, but they're trying to match up with a lot of the high-end optics. So if you're looking at like a Vortex Razor UHD, which is what I typically use, or a Swarovski SLC, those new are probably gonna run you in $2,500 range if you buy them straight from the company. Now, sometimes you're going to be able to find those a little bit cheaper on Optics Planet or Euro Optic or something like that. But straight from the company, this is a huge saving that's going to let you really get out there, get some more tags. And that's what we're all about, tags over gear here. Now, again, these are for out west, so ounces matter. All right, these are 45 ounces, roughly the same size as my Vortex Razor UHDs in the 18 by 56. Uh, but they're about three ounces heavier, okay? The Razors and the SLCs, which are what I have used in the past, both run about 42 ounces. Now, obviously three ounces isn't gonna make a massive difference, but at the end of the day, ounces equal pounds, pounds equal pain, it's a common saying, and you really wanna watch so it doesn't add up. So let's talk about what I actually think of these binos now that we've talked about the numbers. Let's start with what is obviously king when it comes to bino. And that's the glass quality. These are incredible, all right? They have fluorite glass. I don't know what that means scientifically, whether it's UHD, HD, ED, what it is. But what I can tell you is scientifically, it comes out to really, really good glass. These are crystal clear, nice and bright. And I will tell you, they really destroy my Vortex razors in edge to edge clarity. I'm not gonna say they are quite to the level of a Swarovski SLC, but I don't know that anything is, and that's why you're paying almost $1,000 extra for that. So if you're looking for something that's gonna save you a little bit of money, but still be really, really good quality glass, I really gotta steer you towards these. Now let's talk about beyond just the glass, the body quality. 
and they are really well made. They feel really sturdy. You would expect that from this price tag. But the body does have all the things that I don't like about these binos. The glass quality is what really sells me on them, but some of these other things really are a detriment to it. And the first thing is these eyepieces. They don't, the, the clicks are a little mushy. They don't really seem to lock in great. Again, I'm coming from my Vortex razors, and those seem to have a lot better quality clicks in that eyepiece. The next thing I don't like is this large adjustment wheel. All right, it seems to be really touchy and even a little bit loose. Again, this is a demo one. I don't know if that's why, but I found myself really struggling over the last two weeks to get it perfect. I would seem to get it just about perfect, and if you even bump it, it seems to roll right off of it. I like that the razors seem to get there. They're a little bit stiffer, but it really lets you fine tune it. And I don't like how loose this is. You can see that's not even putting a lot of effort into it. The other thing I don't like is this individual eye diopter. Now on my razors, they pop out, you do it, pop it back in, it's set, not gonna move. This has no locking. I don't know that I love that. I would be afraid it's gonna pop out in my pack it's gonna get a little bit tiring to have to do it every single time that you set your binos up on your tripod. I didn't have a ton of problems in the two week, but I did notice the point of the individual eye diopter shifting a little bit each time. I had to play with it each time I pulled it out to glass again. Now that's kind of the big things we hit on binos, glass quality and functionality of the actual body of the bino. Now where do I think these kind of stack up? I think they're probably somewhere in between the Vortex Razor UHDs and the Swarovski SLCs. For the price, they're really, really incredible. Like, I would definitely suggest that you check them out if you're looking at a higher end bino. I will probably end up switching over to these from my Vortex Razor UHDs. I wanna put them side to side. My razors are getting repaired right now, but these are really, really impressive. I like that the 15 by 56 gets you a little bit larger field of view. You're not quite as up close and personal. They're easier to use at a closer range, but at 15 power and with the quality of this glass, you can still reach out a really long ways. They're not gonna replace your spotting scope, but if you're looking at something that you're glassing a thousand yards and in, these are gonna do everything you need to, and then you're only carrying one piece of glass. So I hope you guys found this educational. I hope this was informative and answered a lot of your questions. If you have any other questions, jump on down to the comments. Let me know what you got. I'll try and get them answered. Like I said, I put these through the paces for about two weeks. Definitely don't have a crazy amount of time behind them, but they are really impressive, and I definitely suggest you give them a try. I'm Matt with Deer and Don'ts. I hope you guys jump down, hit that like, come back, hang out, subscribe, hit the little bell notification, all the good stuff us YouTubers have to ask for. But until next time, goodbye.